Welcome to the sharing of Chaitanya Charit Amrita, part number five. We will begin what we already have heard. First, we have heard that even a foolish child can understand Machenda Nandana by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then we heard a shortcut about the plans of Krishna to appear and why so. Then we heard about how can we understand as foolish children. And we heard about the distribution of this kind of love to the Chivas. We heard about the different expansions. We heard about Vaibhav Vilas and Vaibhav Prakash. We heard also who the master of Krishna is. Yes. We heard about Sava Lakshmi, that she is the representative of the six opulences of Krishna. We heard about Sava Kanti, that she is fulfilling all of Krishna's desires. We heard a description of Radhika's love and that her taste is 10 million times bigger than the taste of Krishna. And we heard that actually that's why this is the first reason why Krishna appeared as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he want to have this experience, how big or how the love of Radharani feels for him. And then today we will also hear a second reason why Krishna also appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we will read in Adi Lila chapter 4 from text number 136 on. Last time we read the last text 135. If someone, uh, if sometime I can be the abode of that love, only then may I taste its joy. So it's a big difference if someone is the abode of love or the object of love. So we will read text number 136. Thinking in this way, Lord Krishna was curious to taste that love. His eager desire for that love increasingly blazed in his heart. So the fire was burning in his heart to taste this love. E eka shuna ara lobera prakara svama duya deki krishna karena vichara. That is one desire. Now please hear of another one. Seeing his own beauty, Lord Krishna began to consider. Text number 138. At Bhuta Ananta Purnamora Madurima Drichakate Iharakeha Nahipaya Sima. 
My sweetness is wonderful, infinite and full. No one in the three worlds can find its limit. E prema tvare nitya radika ekali, amara maduyamrita asvate sakali. Only Radhika, by the strength of her love, tastes all the nectar of my sweetness. So we hear that only Radhika, through the strength of her love, can taste all the nectar of Krishna's sweetness. Because it is said that the sweetness of Krishna can only be tasted to that extent that someone has love for him. And because Radharani, she has all love for him, that's why she can taste all his sweetness. And even he himself cannot taste his own sweetness without Radhika. Yatyapini mala radhara sat brema darpana tartapi svachata tara bhate kshana kshana. Although Radha's love is pure like a mirror, its purity increases at every moment. So who may understand that? <laughs> the clearest mirror is already there. Radharani is spotless. Her love is so pure. She is the mirror for her beloved, completely pure, there is nothing more pure than that. But still, this purity increases at every moment. That's astonishing. Text number 141. Amara Madhurya Nahi Batite Avakashe E darpanera age nava nava rupe bhashe. My sweetness also has no room for expansion. Yet it shines before that mirror in newer and newer beauty. Although the sweetness of Krishna has no room to expand more because it is already completely expanded, yet it shines before that mirror, Radha, in newer and newer beauty. How is that? Because the power of the love of Radha is giving him even more sweetness and more sweetness and more sweetness. And this is only possible because Radharani's love is expanding more and more, even though her love is already everywhere and full. So we may remember Achintya Beda Abeda. We heard about that. Man Madhurya Rathara Brema Donhe Hodakari Kshane Kshane Bhade Donhe Keha nahi hari. There is a constant 
competition between my sweetness and the mirror of Rata's love. They both go on increasing, but neither knows defeat. This is the most wonderful battle I ever heard of. It's a battle of sweetness and love. The sweetness of Krishna is increasing by the love of Radha. The more sweet the beloved is, the more increases the love of Radha. And so it's going on and on, higher and higher. And no side will accept defeat. Text 143 Amara Madurya Nitya Nava Nava Hoi Sva Sva Prema Anurupa Bhakte Ashvadoi My sweetness is always newer and newer. Devotees taste it according to their own respective love. Darpanajye deki yati apana maduri asvadite hoiloba asvadite nari. If I see my sweetness in a mirror, I am tempted to taste it, but nevertheless, I cannot. So when Krishna sees himself in the mirror, then he wants to taste his own sweetness. But in this moment, he understands that he is not able to do that. He is not even able to understand himself without Radhika. We remember 1015 Bhagavad Gita. It's not possible for Krishna to understand himself without his inner Shakti, without our beloved Radha. Vichara kariye yadi asvada upoi radika swarup haite tabe manadoi. If I deliberate on a way to taste it, this sweetness, I find that I hanker for the position of radika. So here we can hear that Mohan he understands that if he want to taste his sweetness he needs to have the position of Radhika otherwise it's not possible. So he's hankering for that position. In the purport Srila Prabhupada is writing, Krishna's attractiveness is wonderful and unlimited. No one can know the end of it. Srimati Radharani alone can relish such extensiveness from her position in the Ashraya category. The mirror of Srimati Radharani's 
transcendent love is perfectly clear, yet it appears clearer and clearest in the transcendental method of understanding Krishna. In the mirror of Radharani's heart, the transcendental features of Krishna appear increasingly new and fresh. In other words, the attraction of Krishna increases in proportion to the understanding of Srimati Radharani. Each tries to supersede the other. Neither wants to be defeated in increasing the intensity of love. Desiring to understand Radharani's attitude of increasing love, Lord Krishna appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Text 146 Who manifests an abundance of sweetness greater than mine, which has never been experienced before, and which causes wonder to all. So this is his question. Who manifests an abundance of sweetness greater than mine, which has never been experienced before and which causes wonder to all? Alas, I myself, my mind bewildered upon seeing this beauty impetuously desire to enjoy it like Srimati Radharani. So he wants to enjoy his own sweetness and beauty through the eyes or better to say through the heart, the emotions of Srimati Radharani. This is a text from the Lalita Madhava, 834, from Srila Rupa Goswami. And it was spoken by Lord Krishna when he saw the beauty of his own reflection in a jeweled fountain in Tvaraka. So when Krishna sees his own beauty, then he is astonished and he wants to taste it and the point is he understands that only through the eyes of Srimati Radharani he will be able to do so. The beauty of Krishna has one natural strength. It thrills the hearts of all men and woman, beginning with Lord Krishna himself. So we may understand that this is not just beauty. It's not like here in this mundane world. It's not a limited beauty. It's unlimited. There is no end to it. And even Krishna himself is astonished when he sees some reflection of himself. So we, we may not understand in this bodily conscious how great 
the sweetness of Krishna is, it's not possible. Only if we are able to serve Radha, only if we can come in this extraordinary, uh, extraordinary sweet position of a maid servant of Sri Radhika, we may feel her heart and then we may understand through her the sweetness of Krishna, but then we may not be interested to enjoy that. Because our enjoyment as Mandari is that Sri Radharani is giving pleasure to this sweetness and increasing this sweetness. So also here it is like mostly in this realm. Gorvan, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All yeah. your mercy, Guru Dev. Melting my heart. Oh, I love to melt your heart. If this is possible, that you are using me for that. Why then... not? I understand before why so late understanding is happening to me. Gurudev, you had so much to do to save us fallen souls. You could not do it earlier because you were so busy in saving us. And thank you for this. Thank you very much. So everyone's mind, everyone's heart is attracted by the sweetness of the Lord, even his own. So now we can also understand the greatness of a mandari, because even though there's such an attraction and they have the possibility to enjoy with Krishna, they don't want. They just want to increase the love, the exchange of love between Radha and her beloved. So we may understand the greatness more and more by these examples. Because if you have something in front of you, which is so attractive that no one, no one is able to say no. Everyone would immediately say, yes, give me, let me enjoy. But the Mandri, no interest. Her enjoyment is only Seva. Because, as we heard also yesterday, they are Seva Rupata, they are the embodiments of Seva. And their only enjoyment is Seva, the Seva of the highest possible feelings, the highest possible love, Mahabhav, and the service of Mahabhav Swarup Sri Radha. And like all are attracted to Krishna's sweetness, they are also attracted to his flute song. 
as we hear in the next text 148. Shravane darshane akashaya sarvaman apanna ashvadite krishna karenayatan. All minds are attracted by hearing his sweet voice and flute, or by seeing his beauty. Even Lord Krishna himself makes efforts to taste that sweetness. So even Krishna himself cannot resist, but the mantras can. How is this? It's amazing. Even Lord Krishna himself cannot control his senses when he sees himself. He has to look again and again. Oh, so sweet, this person. Who is that? And then he sees, oh, it's me. E maduyam murta pana sada ye kare, Trishna shanti nahe, Trishna bade nirantare. The thirst of one who always drinks the nectar of that sweetness is never satisfied. Rather, that thirst increases constantly. And this is the nature. If you enjoy something, you want more and more. If something is really good, then you want more and more. Something really sweet. And here we have the highest nectar of the sweetness. And no one will be satisfied. Everyone wants to increase constantly. But who can increase the sweetness of even that? Only Radhika. We have to consider that this is amazing. The sweetest thing. All want to have and enjoy it. Our Swamini can increase that. That's amazing. Such a person being unsatisfied begins to blaspheme Lord Brahma. saying that he does not know the art of creating well and is simply inexperienced. Kotinetra nahi dila sabe dila dui rahate nimesha krishna ki dekipa muni. He has not given millions of eyes to see the beauty of Krishna. He has given only two eyes, and even those eyes blink. How then shall I see the lovely face of Krishna? So as we know, this is a prayer of the gopis. The gopis say, O oh Krishna, when you go to the forest during the day and we do not see your sweet face, which is surrounded by beautiful curling hairs, half a second becomes as long as an entire age for us. And we consider the creator 
who has put eyelids on the eyes we use for seeing you to be simply a fool. Isn't that nice? The gopis say, the creator is a fool. How he can put eyelids on the eyes when we want to see the beauty of Krishna? And although the gopis are saying this, and maybe for the mandris, there seems to be not so much taste in that. Yes, there is, because who is the one of all gopis? Who is the greatest of all gopis? And doesn't, doesn't she think maybe in the same way? But our Rata, she actually can expand. And in this way, she can have so many eyes to see Krishna everywhere. And she don't even need eyes to see him everywhere. She feels him everywhere. She sees him everywhere. And wherever she looks, he has to be there. So in this way, we may also meditate how Radharani's view would be in this prayer. This verse was spoken by the gopis and it's from Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 31, 15. The gopis saw their beloved Krishna at Kurukshetra after a long separation. They secured and embraced him in their hearts through their eyes and they attained a joy so intense that not even perfect yogis can attain. The gopis cursed the creator for creating eyelids that interfered with their vision. There is no other consummation for the eyes than the side of Krishna. So for Radharani there is also nothing else to consume for the eyes than the side of her beloved, what else she wants to see. What is giving taste for her eyes? Whoever sees him is most fortunate indeed. So who is the most fortunate person and who can really see him? The gopis say, O oh friends, those eyes that see the beautiful faces of the sons of Maharaj Nanda are certainly fortunate. We can see it's not mentioned one face, different faces different sons of Maharaj Nanda. Can understand, yes, brothers. But we also can see this in... He has different faces in different situations. But also they are brothers. As they two sons enter the forest, surrounded by their friends, driving the cows before them, they hold their flutes to their mouth 
and glance lovingly upon the residents of Brindavan. For those who have eyes, we think there is no greater object of vision. Text number 156. The woman of Mathura say, What austerities must the gopis have performed? With their eyes they always drink the nectar of the face of Lord Krishna, which is the essence of loveliness and is not to be equaled or surpassed. That loveliness is the only abode of beauty, fame and opulence. It is self-perfect, ever fresh and extremely rare. We may consider here that Who can see this face in every moment, wherever she is looking? And who wants to be seen by her in every moment? The sweetness of Lord Krishna is unprecedented and its strength is also unprecedented. Simply by hearing of such beauty, the mind becomes unsteady. Lord Krishna's own beauty attracts Lord Krishna himself, but because he cannot fully enjoy it, his mind remains full of sorrow. This is a description of his second desire. Now please listen as I describe the third. So we heard about two desires of Krishna. One, he wants to taste the love of Radhika for him. Second, he wants to taste the beauty through the eyes of Radharani. Now comes the third point. This conclusion of Rasa is extremely deep. Only Svarup Damoda knows much about it. Anyone else who claims to know it must have heard it from him, for he was the most intimate companion of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Gopika Nera Bremara Ruta Bhavanama Vishudanya Mala Brema Gabu Nahe Kama. The love of the gopis is called Rudha Bhav. It is pure and spotless. It is not at any time lust. The pure love of the gopis has become celebrated by the name lust. The dear devotees of the Lord 
headed by Sri Uddhava, desire to taste that love. This is a verse from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.2 285 to 286. Lust and love have different characteristics, just as iron and gold have different natures. So Prabhupada is making here clear in his purport one should try to discriminate between sexual love and pure love, for they belong to different categories, with a gulf of difference between them. They are as different from one another as iron is from gold. Both metals, but completely different. The desire to gratify one's own senses is karma, lust. But the desire to please the senses of Lord Krishna is prema, love. In the purport, we can hear some description. Sarvata dvangsha rahitam satya pitvangsha karane yat bhava bhandanam yunoho saprema parikirtitaha. If there is ample reason for the dissolution of a conjugal relationship, and yet such a dissolution does not take place, such a relationship of Intimate love is called pure. So let us think about this or um, reflect on that a little bit. If you are together with someone and there's all reason that you should leave immediately because his character is not really straight and good, but you still stay because you feel very deep love and want to serve in this love, then we can call this pure. Even in that realm here, we could say, oh, such a pure love. So in the case of Radharani and Krishna, we may meditate on that. And there are some very nice um, verses where Krishna actually has to defend himself and has to declare that he is uh, pure and he is good enough to have a relationship with Vrata because as we know the flower picking in the forest there is one situation where actually he is told that actually he is not on the level of Radharani and he cannot actually have a relationship with her and he has to fend, defend himself actually. So this is actually stuff for good uh, um, humorful and deep uh, exchange in love. So text 166. The object of lust is only the enjoyment of one's own senses. So lust you can nicely describe. You want to enjoy with your senses, that's lust. But love caters to the enjoyment of love of Lord Krishna, and thus is very powerful. So if you have only the interest of the enjoyment of 
Lord Krishna and in our case we want that Krishna is enjoying through our Swamini because we know only this can satisfy him fully. There's no other way. Only Radharani can give him full satisfaction. That's why if you want to really be a Krishna devotee and please him, then you have to go to Radharani. So even for that Krishna's, we may take this argument. You want to please Krishna? So then go to Radharani because only Radharani can please him fully. If we serve her, we please him. But Mandri has no interest to serve Krishna. Mandri has interest to serve the purest love and to even make it broader and deeper and higher, this love. And this is again very astonishing that this is possible only by the grace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is possible only by His grace. Never again, never before, we heard of such a mercy. Social customs, scriptural injunctions, bodily demands, fruitive action, shyness, patience, bodily pleasures, self-gratification, and the path of Vanashrama Dharma which is difficult to give up. The gopis have forsaken all these as well as their own relatives and their punishment and scolding for the sake of serving Lord Krishna. So it's a very clear description of pure love. They render loving service to him for the sake of his enjoyment. So we may remember in which position Radharani is. She is married. She is under the uh, Beobachtung, under the eyes of her elders. She cannot move freely, actually. She is a princess. So for her, it's not easy, not at all easy, to meet Krishna and serve him. She has to give up all these things which actually were described. Even Vanasham Dharma, even religion, religious activities, the, I say, good, uh, I don't have this word now. So even, um, when people will call her a bad girl, she does not care at all of all of this. She is ready to give up everything for the savor of her beloved. That's pure love. And that is called firm attachment to Lord Krishna. It is spotlessly pure, like a clean cloth that has no stain. Mm. 
Therefore, lust and love are quite different. Lust is like dense darkness, but love is like the bright sun. Thus, there is not the slightest taint of lust in the gopis' love. Their relationship with Krishna is only for the sake of his enjoyment. So I was wondering about this statement because sometimes we heard that the gopis, they have some self-interest. But actually we have to differentiate. There are different uh, levels. There's a material level and there's a spiritual level. So on the material level, they are all completely free of lust, completely free of the material influence. But how to understand that the gopis want to enjoy with Krishna? Some of them, they are just friend with Radharani that they may have the opportunity, right? That's another level. If we see they are trying to satisfy Krishna, but actually when we consider that only Radharani can give full pleasure, full satisfaction to Krishna, then we can see that actually it's not possible for them to give full enjoyment to Krishna. Right? But this is on a transcendental level and it has nothing to do with the lust of sadaka. Just to distinguish it. You may say it's the intention to give pleasure to Krishna by their own, not true Radharani. And this can never be full. O oh, dearly beloved, your lotus feet are so soft that we place them gently on our breasts, fearing that your feet will be hurt. Our life rests only in you. Our minds, therefore, are filled with anxiety that your tender feet might be bounded by pebbles as you roam about on the forest path. This is a text from Srimad Bhagavatam 10.31.19 and it was spoken by the gopis when Krishna left them in the midst of the Rasa Lila. So this are the thoughts of someone who has no lust but love. They don't think about themselves. They think about the softness of the feet. They may be hurt when he is going over the forest path. And this is actually how the mandaris feel when Swamini is going outside in the night. And she is going to meet Krishna on Abhisa. She is on Abhisa and she is forgetting herself. The strong desire to meet her beloved will maybe lead that her feet will be hurt. And the Mandri, she has anxiety 
at the tender feet of Radharani will be wounded. That's love. This is pure love. The gopis do not care for their own pleasure or their pain. All their physical and mental activities are directed toward offering enjoyment to Lord Krishna. In the same way, the manjaris do not care for their own pleasure or pain. All their activities are directed toward the seva to Swamini. They renounced everything for Krishna. They have pure attachment to giving Krishna pleasure. That's the gopis. And how is it with the mandaris? They are giving up everything. They are with Radharani all the time. They don't even care for a home. They are ready to live in the forest with Radharani. Wherever she is, they don't care. They just want to serve her under any circumstances, day or night. Oh, my beloved gopis, this is text number 176 now. You have renounced social customs, scriptural injunctions, and your relatives for my sake. I disappeared behind you only to increase your concentration upon me. Since I disappeared for your benefit, you should not be displeased with me. This also text from Srimad Bhagavatam 10.32.21. It was spoken by Lord Krishna when he returned to the arena of the Rasa Leela. One hundred seventy seven. Lord Krishna has a promise from before to reciprocate with his devotees according to the way they worship him. Ye yatamam prapatyante tungstataiva bajami aham. Mama Vart Manuvartante Manusha Parta Sarvashaha. In whatever way my devotees surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Brita. So Srila Prabhupada writes here in his purport, Krishna was never ungrateful to the gopis, for as he declared to Arjuna in this verse from Bhagavad Gita 4.11, the reciprocates with his devotees in proportion to the transcendent loving service they render unto him. So we can understand that actually this is also our nature, right? If someone is coming to you and is in a special mood, always when he sees you, you will 
of course reciprocate in the same way right what what else you can do if he's angry on you you try to pacify or you know you have to to do something because he's giving the first the first uh, step in the mood so you have to deal with that right so krishna also has to deal with that you may interested in his person or not you may just have heard that he's god and you want something for from him then he will also uh, reciprocate in this way so in the same way if you want to have a relationship with Radha we may think about what are the interests of Radha how can we reciprocate with her well she has only one interest Krishna may have different kind of interests but Radharani has only one only one focus so how we can have a relationship with her which is actually fruitful it's only possible if we help her to satisfy meet her beloved only if we are interested in love we may have a relationship which is growing with Radharani. If some person has only interest in building and working the whole day, how you can have a relationship with him? You have to go to, to build with him or work with him, right? because he has no other interest. So in Radhika's case, she has only the interest to serve in the best way to her beloved. So how you can have a relationship with her? Help in her interest. Give seva. Maybe a little, just a little, and then more and more. That's the way to come in. So we may see our daily program. We have to cook. Yes. Radharani wants to cook the best dishes for Krishna. So help her or take help from her. Both. It's possible. That's a relationship. Oh, Radharani, please let me help to increase your offerings to your beloved. May I make some little sabchi? Some rice? Or maybe you can help me to cook something for your beloved. Something practical. That's the way to go in and then grow this relationship more and more because it's natural whatever is the first step of a person in in the relationship to me i also reciprocate right like that it's just natural someone wants something from me i can see can i help or not i don't know i have to see Radharani can always help us to serve, to increase our love, to increase our rati, because she has all rati, she has all love. She is the most richest person in love, that even Krishna is begging from her. Even Krishna is bowing down to her feet. So what to speak of us?
and she is very graceful. So he has spoken about the relationship between the gopis and Krishna. And this is the beginning state of all the souls. This is actually describing what is the beginning of a relationship on the transcendental platform, actually. We want to serve, we want to give love. That's the point. We want to get rid of lust and want to serve. So then, something will come back. So Krishna had given the promise, and this promise has been broken by the worship of the gopis, as Lord Krishna himself admits. He is saying in text 180, O gopis, I am not able to repay my debt for your spotless service. Even within a lifetime of Brahma. So he will be indebted for this love. What to speak of Radharani's love? Your connection with me is beyond reproach. You have worshipped me, cutting off all domestic ties, which are difficult to break. Therefore, please let your own glorious deeds be your compensation. This is a text from Srimad Bhagavatam 10.32.22. Text 181. Now, whatever affection we see the gopis show in their own bodies, know it for certain to be only for the sake of Lord Krishna. So Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is giving intense uh, underlining that the gopis have no own interests, even if they put their kajal and everything, make the body nice, hairstyle, and it's not for them. It's not because they want to go and enjoy. They want to give enjoyment. This is love, pure love. And in the spiritual sky, there's only pure love in different kinds. But it's pure love. You have to understand it doesn't have anything to do with our material conditions. It's pure. Even though they try to have a meeting with Krishna, they want to give him enjoyment. But they cannot, like Radharani can do. So in this way, it is also, you may say, on a transcendental platform, it's also selfish. If I know that I'm not capable to give full enjoyment to Krishna, but I try, what's that? So, Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is underlining it. There is no, not an inch of enjoyment, of the wish of enjoyment in the gopis. They want to give enjoyment. Selfless love. And Srila Prabhupada is writing in the purport, the selfless love of Godhead exhibited by the gopis cannot have any parallel. And we know who is the highest gopi. We should not therefore misunderstand the gratefulness of the gopis in their personal decoration. The gopis dresses themselves as 
beautifully as possible just to make Krishna happy by seeing them. They had no ulterior desires. They dedicated their bodies and everything they possessed to the service of Sri Krishna, taking for granted that their bodies were meant for his enjoyment. They dressed themselves on the understanding that Krishna would be happy by seeing and touching them. So it's completely selfless. And this is the nature of the soul, actually, in Seva, completely selfless, but in different kind of mellows, different relationships. But it's always a Seva to the highest enjoyer. And the highest seva is done by Rata. And if we want to take part in this highest exchange of love, there's only one position. And this is the position of Mandri, Kinkari. Then we are direct in the seva of the highest possible form of loving service to Krishna. Krishna finds joy in seeing and touching this body. It is for this reason that they cleanse and decorate their bodies. And this is the reason, it's text 183, and this is the reason why Mandaris are decorating Radharani's body. Because her wish is to give full enjoyment to her beloved and the Mandaris, they are helping in the seva. O oh, Arjuna, this is now text 184. There are no greater receptacles of deep love for me than the gopis who cleanse and decorate their bodies because they consider them mine. We can understand Everything belongs to him. But, does, but this fact doesn't give him any joy. If your children belong to you, but they are not in the mood of exchanging love with you, do they give you any joy? <laughs> you love them, okay, but they're making problems. But if they take this mood of loving service to you, then highest enjoyment will come. And again, the highest seva is done by Radharani. If we connect with her and are the shadows of her, then we are giving the most wonderful, greatest seva to Krishna. So we only have to concentrate on one point, on Radha, everything done. Don't even have to think about Krishna's pleasure anymore because everything is included.
We don't have to think about God. <laughs> Not good to think about God. <laughs> We have done so long. Forget about this God. Serve the love of God. But there's another wonderful feature of the emotion of the gopis. Its power is beyond the comprehension of the intelligence. So we cannot understand. When the gopis see Lord Krishna, they derive unbounded bliss, although They have no desire for such pleasure. The gopis taste a pleasure 10 million times greater than the pleasure Lord Krishna derives from seeing them. So we cannot understand. We can feel it maybe when we are in our transcendental body, but we cannot understand. Krishna is giving the love. They want to have this exchange with him and he is giving the love. The wonderful characteristics of the gopis are beyond imagination. They have no desire, no desire for personal satisfaction. Yet, when Krishna is happy by seeing them, That happiness of Krishna makes the gopis a million times more happy than Krishna himself. This is the character of Krishna. He's giving more back than he becomes, actually. But there's one person he cannot do. And this is Radhika. Because he doesn't even understand her love. He can not. That's why he wants to come. And he wants to see it through the eyes or feel it through the heart of Radharani. The gopis have no inclination for their own enjoyment and yet their joy increases that is indeed a contradiction so not understandable that's the law of love of transcendental love not material love for this contradiction i see only one solution The joy of the gopis lies in the joy of the beloved Krishna. Ah, this is an explanation how it could be. If they see that Krishna is happy, they are happy. But because of the grace of Krishna, they are even more happy than himself. Now we can understand a little bit of the sweetness of Krishna. Just a bit. If you serve him, he will not give just the same. If you are going one step towards him, he will come 100 steps towards you. And the amazing thing is that Radharani is even more Graceful. If you go one step towards her, she will come thousand steps to you. 
And if she is accepting your seva, Krishna has to also accept. He is included. We can also understand this on the material platform. If you have a if you have a friendship with the housewife, then she will invite you, right? She will say, "Oh, please come visit us, take a meal in our house," and the man has to accept what he can do. When love is inviting you. The rest has to follow. So we have to stick by the feet of Radharani. And then this Krishna will be even more graceful than to the gopis. Because the less you want from him, the more he gives. This is actually the logical thing of transcendental love. The less you want, the more you get. That's the law of transcendental love. Here in the material world, it's vice versa, right? You always want something for you. But in the transcendental world, everything wants your pleasure. Actually, they want Krishna's pleasure. That's something else. We want to live in a world where everyone, everyone wants to have the best for him, or we want to live in a world where everyone wants to have the best for you, for the other, not for himself for someone else. We may understand this. It's mathematic, transcendental mathematic. You don't want, you get all. Because you want to give love, full love, then you get full love. But because you are small, and the highest love is very big, you will get much more. It's very logical from that point. So the gopi think, Krishna has obtained so much pleasure by seeing me. And that thought increases the fullness and beauty of their faces and bodies. The beauty of Lord Krishna increases at the sight of the beauty of the gopis. And the more the gopis see Lord Krishna's beauty, the more the beauty increases. In this way, a competition takes place between them in which no one acknowledges defeat. We have heard this before. And we know who is the source of all gopis. So we may understand that this again is the fight between love and sweetness. As we have heard, Krishna and Radha, the mirror, Radha's love, and the sweetness of Krishna, they have a battle and no one will be defeated. And so it's increasing endless. So sweetness and love are increasing endless. We have to accept that. <laughs> I love to accept this because we will be part in that. Because we will serve the mirror of the sweetness. And the mirror will be more and more clean by more and more savor to our beloved Swamini. And then the sweetness of the Lord will increase again. And this fight will go on, the loving fight. 
and it will never end and we will be in the middle. And this is the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Amazing grace. Because amazing is that he is described that actually Krishna is thinking about this three points, why he wants to come here. And as we know, there are also external points why he come here for Sankirtan and to free the Chivas. Actually, by his inner wishes, the rest is already fulfilled. It's just a side effect. But through the mercy of Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, we may have a glimpse of this inner reasons why Krishna actually wanted to come. And this gives so much light to the sweetness of Radharani. Because Radharani's glories are the reason why he wants to come. Because only pure love, only Mahabhav can move him. He will not move in any other, out of any other reason. So in this way we may understand that Radharani is the base why Krishna wants to come. So the gopi's love is without any trace of lust. The happiness of the abode of love is in the happiness of the object of that love. Priti Vishayanandetat Ashrayananda Tanhanahi Nicha Sukha Vanchara Sambanda. The happiness of the abode of love is in the happiness of this object of that love. This is not a relationship of desire for personal gratification. And this is the basic stone of the building of Seva. If you want to build a house of Seva, this is the basic stone, the first stone actually. The happiness of the abode of love is in the happiness of the object of that love. This is not a relationship of desire for personal gratification. So please, Gurudev, I have one request to you, please install this stone in my heart, because it's a stone-like like heart, so maybe it's a good first stone building this house of love. The ground stone of Brema. Agora, Bani, please also put in my heart. By your words, inspire me to. It happens to me and all devotees. Beautiful, Garvani. Beautiful. But Prabhupada right. unexpected, and. Uh, but a beautiful to realization and you helping us to realize it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.
Gurudev, for this opportunity. This is just the mercy. I'm a mercy case, and you are the giver of the mercy. Yeah, and I'm a mercy case from the Vaishnava. <laughs> Some drop of the so the end of this whole thing is very nice explained in one text it's 200 to 201 whenever there is unselfish love that is its style the reservoir of love derives pleasure when the lovable object is pleased. When the pleasure of love interferes with the service of Lord Krishna, the devotee becomes angry toward such ecstasy. Yeah. <laughs> It's a wonderful description of selfless love. So wow. even if even if we may have some feelings, some some tears will come and then I cannot perform my seva because of that. I'm angry on this ec ecstasy. This is actually the the nature of pure love. Yeah. So that's why mantras are stable. So thank you very much for the possibility to have this sharing here on such a wonderful uh, theme, the Chaitanya Charit Amrita, with the mercy of Gurudev. Thank you very much, Gurudev. And uh, maybe someone wants to add something or a question or something. Just my gratitude, uh, dear Gorvani, just my gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so unfortunate that I have to earn money and can cannot take part every Thursday. But I, I love what I heard from your Bhagavad Gita explanation. It's so wonderful. It's a Brahma explanation of Bhagavad Gita. Thank you very much. Stay in touch. Thank you for the mercy and please Bless me that I can live in this world we are reading and hearing about, actually. That I attain my spiritual form and live in that. Please bless me like that. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Gauravani. Radhe Radhe. Thank you so much. How are you? Uh, you can hear me because yes, I wind. can hear. So uh, it was so beautiful, like always. That uh, uh, this reading to me is giving so big agitation, so big uh, emotions. And um, during your uh, reading, um, I'm remembering of uh, Rupa Goswami's prayers that he said the most merciful incarnation. And during your uh, reading, uh, I 
from one moment I see why it's like that. Uh, because yeah, like you read you was reading that Krishna give to Jivas something what even he cannot taste in his life. And he giving now to Jivas. So this is something really wonderful and beautiful and must 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 mer mer merciful incarnation. It's really nice, uh, and also it's very it's very nice uh, if if this reading can become also some audio book because it's it's something very special, very very special. Uh, thank you so much to you and to Gurdjieff for his mercy. So, Anidia, I hug you. I, I really, I love that you, you, you making up this point, actually. This is really what I understood through the mercy of Gurudev, that actually we get more than even Krishna can have all the time. He can have it sometime, but he cannot have it all the time. So it's, it's such a wonderful point and it shows the mercy for us. It's such a undescribable mercy. It's, you, you cannot get it here in the head. You can only feel it. Thank you for that point. Thank you to all of you. You're there. Uh, thank you, Gauravani. You are really blessed and we are blessed to feel your feelings and to also witness this tweet exchange between you and Guru Dave when you try to <laughs> glorify each other. And it's so amazing. It's so sweet. And thank you. Taste, very tasty. <laughs> so, Niti, if I'm blessed, then definitely I'm blessed by you also because you blessed me so much and also your beloved twice part, your second part, which is in Bandavan now. So you blessed us also so much. So we are living from all your blessings. What we can say, we have no other uh, power. It's the power which comes from the blessings of all the Vaishnavas and Gurudev. And of course, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because when we read this, we get the blessings of him also. Beautiful. Thank you, Gauravani. So nice. Thank you. We sit just in the line of Nityananda. And when I listen to you, I can see that the bath is, oh, what is given by him, is in your heart. And who put it there is our Guru did. And he is the right hand, I would say, of Nityananda. And hopefully, we also become the right hand of our Guru did <coughs> to continue this beautiful line to give this mercy what we get from our Nityananda also to others and manifested in the hearts of others. So nice to listen that what you are telling about and also our other sisters and so nice the sharings no? to see how it is condensing. It's the amazing so grace, right? 100% it's amazing. <laughs> it's put in our heart. Thank you. Thank I you. show you the room. Uh -huh. See? <laughs> oh. uh -huh. <laughs> Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. How are you? I'm Everything good. good? Nice. Nice to see you. John, yesterday arrived here in the month. Yeah. You will stay longer? 
Yeah, tomorrow at least. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe really we will see go. us in August. Yeah, I'll see you in August. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in the back also. Thanks for your sharing. Very nice. Oh. And Thank you. You know, it is said you can only share if there are listeners. And if the listeners are not uh, greedy, then you cannot share. So it's Here all because of you. No, no, it's all because of you. And we are appreciating very much what you are doing. And all these Zoom meetings are very nice thing. Yeah. So we should continue with that and all should participate in it and share. Yes. Right. This is the great, great mercy of Gurudev that he made such opportunities, so much opportunities during the week. We are living from that. Yeah. Yes, every day is some sharing. Ten meetings a week. Ten meetings a week. <laughs> yes, wonderful. We have improved 100%. <laughs> 108. Chayo, <laughs> thank you very much. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe.